This is the only Mac Mini buying guide you need to watch, and trust me, I can say that because I've made loads of them, and this is definitely the best one. I think it's fair to say that the Mac Mini is the most interesting, non-interesting Mac you can buy. I mean, look at it, it's just a little box, but it's a fantastic little box, an unbelievably over-performing little box that has a massive fan base. I'm one of those fans. I built this business on one of these machines. The problem is that Apple doesn't make it very easy to buy one of these because the buying journey is quite confusing. That is unless you know my five-point buying guide for the Mac Mini, which I'm going to reveal in a few seconds time. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Trend Micro and their fantastic premium security suite. So if you're looking for a complete all-in-one device and identity protection solution for your home, this could be your knight in shining armor. And what I love about Premium Security Suite is that it includes all of the stuff that you need to remain safe online. So it's got a VPN, a password manager, mobile security, ID security, protection against ransomware, email scamming, and other forms of cybercrime. And it works across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Chromebooks. Basically, your entire family can get involved, no matter which device they're using. There's even 24-7 support included that is provided by real human beings. Like all of Trend Micro stuff, Premium Security Suite is so easy to get set up and start using. It's all top-notch stuff. The VPN is a great example of this. I use that in my local coffee shop and also at the gym when I'm not in this studio and I want to keep my data safe. So if, like me, you work regularly away from home and you want to keep your data safe in coffee shops and those sort of locations, or you just want to keep your kids' devices safe from the dark web, Premium Security Suite is an absolute no-brainer. To find out more, just click that link below. And now it's on to my five-point buying guide for this. All you get with a Mac Mini is a power cable, some documentation you'll never read, and some Apple stickers. That's it. And that means you need some other stuff. You'll definitely need a monitor. This is an MSI ultra-wide 34-inch display. They don't make this one anymore, but I'll put a comparable one in the description. But without this, you can't see anything. You'll need a keyboard. This is a Newfie Air 96 mechanical keyboard, but you can buy any keyboard for the Mac Mini. I'll put a link to this in the description as well, but I wouldn't buy the Apple keyboards. They're so expensive. Speaking of Apple accessories, don't buy one of these. Buy this. It's the MX Master 3 from Logitech, and it is the best mouse you'll ever use ever. You can never have enough ports, which is why I always recommend getting a USB hub for your Mac Mini. This is made by Satechi. Your Mac Mini sits on it very nice and flush. It's brilliant. I'll put a link in the description as well. And while we're talking about connectivity and stuff, it's probably worth picking up a few external SSDs, particularly if, like me, you deal with lots of big files. Secondly, I wouldn't be tempted by the Mac Studio, and I know it's tempting because you've got all that extra power, it's double the height and must be double the better, and you've got that front-loading S. In fact, you've got an SD card slot, which you don't get on the Mac Mini. However, the Mac Mini starts at £649, and the Mac Studio starts at just over two grand. they are vastly different computers, and as I've always said, if you don't know why you'd need a Mac Studio, you don't need a Mac Studio. If you're thinking about about the M2 Pro Mac Mini, then there is a case to go for the Mac Studio instead. I made a video about that recently, which I'll link to above, but for everyone else, just get the Mac Mini. Number three, there are two options to choose from with a Mac Mini. The first one is the standard M2 Mac Mini. As I mentioned a moment ago, that's £649 in the UK, which is by far the cheapest way to get a brand new Mac. That base model comes with eight gigabytes of unified memory, which trust me, these days is a lot more than you think, and it can be maxed out to 24 gig. And that Mac is perfect for anyone who isn't racing against the clock for video edits or audio productions or doing really complex, involved, 
programming work. It's basically the everyday Mac, which has more headroom than you think. The second option is the M2 Pro Mac Mini, which I have over there somewhere. That starts at £1,399 in the UK, and it is an absolute beast. And that one can be maxed out to 32 gigabytes of unified memory, and a huge and frankly ludicrous 8 terabytes of storage. It also has more CPU and GPU cores than the standard M2 Mac Mini, and more ports on the back. And this machine really is for the pros, so if you do work against the clock for video editing, audio production, that sort of stuff, then that is the one to get. However, and as mentioned a moment ago, just make sure you don't go above that £2,000 bracket, because as soon as you do that, when you start specking up the M2 Pro Mac Mini, you creep into Mac Studio territory, and that's where you need to start thinking about the big one. Next up is the fact that you might experience Bluetooth issues. Now I have to mention this because I had no end of issues with the M1 Mac Mini when it was in my old studio. That's kind of the point these days though because I haven't had any Bluetooth problems with this M2 Pro Mac Mini. And if you weren't aware, the Bluetooth issues we think relate to the design of the Mac Mini which hasn't changed for years. On the M1 version at least, I could barely keep things connected to it. Even Apple's own accessories like the AirPods Max and their key keyboards and trackpads would disconnect regularly. Now as mentioned that all happened in my old studio which was a very small box room and as you'd guess I have loads of Bluetooth accessories. Regardless lots of other people have the same problems and it's not good enough. The good news is that Apple has changed the Bluetooth setup slightly in the M2 Mac Mini and as I mentioned a moment ago I haven't experienced any issues in this room with it. So the chances are you'll be absolutely fine, but it would be remiss of me not to mention it in this buying guide. The last tip is the easiest and probably the most important, which is the fact that you don't need to overspend on the Mac Mini. We live in a very different world now when it comes to specking up your Mac. For instance, as I alluded to earlier, you probably don't need as much unified memory as you think you do. As I always say, if you know that you need a certain amount of memory, you know you need a certain amount of memory. If you don't know how much you need, and you can only afford the 8GB M2 Mac Mini, that will be absolutely fine. The same goes with the storage. Remember, you have ports on the back of this computer, which means you can add SSD storage at any time. That's exactly what I do. And please do not buy that M2 Pro Mac Mini unless you really need to and you know you need to. Those are my five tips for buying the right M2 Mac Mini for your needs and I would love to know which one are you going to buy. Let me know in the comments. And if you are still tempted by that M2 Pro Mac Mini, keep watching for a link to a video which I think you'll find very useful.